Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Maneuverability is a critical ability of an aircraft to change its trajectory and altitude using just flight controls. Combined with speed, stealth capabilities, and weapons payload, this feature becomes crucial in defining success of a fighter in modern air combat. Although all aircraft have a certain degree of maneuverability to perform its assigned mission, this particular capability becomes one of extreme importance for a fighter jet. Back in the 80s, NASA developed a series of research programs to explore the high angle of attack, commonly named Alpha, and post-stall flight regiments. In order to achieve flight validation of ground-based aircraft design technologies, such as aerodynamics, computational fluid dynamics, flight control systems, and propulsion. The first two projects operated the F-18 High Alpha Research Vehicle and the F-16 Variable Stability In-Flight Simulator Test Aircraft. The programs help to understand basic high alpha aerodynamics, as well as to implement a retrofit of thrust, vectoring on an existing design to evaluate tactical usage of such a system. The third one, the X-31 Research Aircraft Program, envisioned to achieve demonstration of enhanced fighter maneuverability at post-stall angles of attack with a controlled configuration vehicle design. While the F-18 Harvey and the F-16 Vista were modifications to fighter aircraft already in production, The X-31 was a purely experimental aircraft design, and only two X-31 aircraft were built. The program was a joint initiative between Rockwell and the German MBB company. To reduce development costs, the aircraft were built using airframes and components from existing European an American aircraft. The X-31 program performed a total of 580 flights from 1990 to 1995, achieving some of the most significant milestones in the exploration of flight at high angle of attack. For instance, in November 1992, the first prototype demonstrated stable flight capability at an astonishing 70 degrees of alpha, when most fighters stalled at 25 degrees or even less at the time. In 1993, the second prototype performed a post-stall high angle of attack maneuver called the Herps Maneuver, a 180-degree turn with minimum radius, 70 degrees of alpha while rolling around its longitudinal axis.
The Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor was the first aircraft with outstanding super maneuverability. Entering the service in 2005, it became a critical component of the U.S. Air Force tactical power ever since. The unique combination of stealth capabilities, super crews, outstanding agility, and advanced situational awareness makes Raptor the world's preeminent air dominance fighter. The jet carries lethal long-range air-to-air and air-to-ground weaponry. Its nozzles are able to swivel between negative 20 and plus 20 degrees with respect to its longitudinal axis. generating a powerful pitching moment that allows the aircraft to perform extreme maneuvers during a dogfight combat, outperforming any possible enemy aircraft. The thrust vector control can be operated from low speed up to transonic speed. Although previous experiments explored thrust vectoring in three axes, the F-22 was designed only around the pitch axis for two main reasons. First, superior combat maneuvers could be achieved with a combination of pitch axis and the control authority in yaw and roll provided by the two large rudders in the V-tail without the need of thrust vector control in yaw and roll. The second reason is low observability of F-22, presenting a minimum radar cross-section reflection even from the rear. A nozzle vectoring in three axes would increase radar reflection of the aircraft, deteriorating its stealth features. Several aircraft designs equipped with thrust vectoring were developed by Russia to achieve super maneuverability features. A relevant example of this technology is demonstrated in the Su-30 and its variants made for the Government of India and the Royal Malaysian Air Force. Both aircraft have many significant improvements over its original common airframe, thrust vectoring engines, and digital fly-by-wire system. However, the Malaysian Su-30 MKM version differs mainly in the composition of the onboard avionics. It can carry up to 17,637 pound payload over an 805 mile unrefueled combat radius. Apart from extreme maneuverability at high speed, thrust vectoring can be incorporated into aircraft design for different mission operational capabilities, such as vertical takeoff and landing. The 1960s British Hawker Sidley Harrier became the first operational fighter with V-STOL capabilities. VSTOL stands for Vertical, Short Takeoff, and Landing. The unique design of the Harrier features four nozzles, two per side, that could swivel up to 90 degrees downwards, providing the aircraft with vertical thrust for takeoff and landing.
In flight, the nozzles would be directed rearwards, directing the engine thrust backwards as in a standard jet aircraft. The original Harrier design underwent many modifications along the years and was operational in several countries, taking advantage of its V-Stole characteristics. The F-35B is another example of use of thrust vectoring for V-STOL operations. The aircraft was designed for the U.S. Marine Corps to operate from amphibious assault ships featuring a flight deck of less than 900 feet with no launch catapults. The F-35B has significant changes in the propulsion system compared to the versions operated by U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy. To achieve vertical thrust, the F-35B delivers a combination of high temperature thrust from the engine, directed downwards by the use of a rotating and swiveling nozzle, and a cold temperature thrust delivered by a huge lift fan located behind the pilot's cockpit. Although both the Harrier and the F-35B have the capability of performing vertical takeoffs, in practical operation with the aircraft fully loaded of weapons, the short takeoff is preferred to the vertical takeoff. Since a vertical takeoff at maximum takeoff weight demands an extreme amount of power and fuel, dramatically affecting the operational range of the aircraft. Thrust vectoring is not limited to aircraft alone. In fact, it has been used in spacecraft such as satellites and rockets since the very beginning of the space age, although in a different technology than what we see in aircraft. One of the design solutions to feature thrust vectors in liquid fuel rockets is the gimbal thrust, which essentially means that the whole rocket engine can gimbal around a pivoting axis, moving the entire combustion engine and the exhaust nozzle. This technology was used in the famous Rocketdyne F-1 engines, five of which powered the first stage of the Saturn V rocket that flew the Apollo 11 mission to the moon in 1969. Gimbal thrust was also used in the Space Shuttle Orbiter, with three powerful engines in the back of the orbiter receiving liquid fuel from the external tank. The technology is still used in the largest rocket under development by NASA nowadays, the Space Launch System, SLS. Four RS-25 gimbling engines power the core block of the first stage of this massive rocket, which will be used for deep space exploration during the next decade. Go for engine start. H boys are on and engine starts. The most innovative application of thrust vectoring in spacecraft 
can be found in SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket first stage recovery. Once the first stage is separated from the payload in the stratosphere, it uses an incredibly precise combination of lateral thrust impulses delivered by cold gas ejection nozzles working along the main liquid fuel engines in order to align the first stage to a backwards re-entry trajectory, perform a soft deceleration without parachutes, and achieve a high accuracy landing in a dedicated pad within 10 meters of precision. This amazing technology allows a rapid reutilization of the first stage of this rocket for a next mission. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.